Okay, we'll be looking again into the yellow slice here, and this segment is entitled Interpreting Relative Frequency Histograms. So we've already learned how to make a histogram, but now we're simply going to look at a histogram that's already set up, and we're going to make certain uh, interpretations on this. Um, they tell us a long story here about what this um, histogram represents. Uh, probably the main thing we want to get out of that is that our sample size here is 50, which means that if you were to add up all of these uh, heights of these bars, uh, you would get 50 out of that, so that just saves us time because we don't actually have to add that up. So let's make a note here someplace that our sample size here is 50. Uh, now we have another uh, issue down here at the bottom. Read this carefully. It says, based on the histogram, find the proportion of weight loss values. And so find the proportion. So one thing we want to do then is to kind of look at our notes here for this section. And uh, let's make the note here. When they say proportion in this particular context, they are talking about a fraction expressed as a decimal. So when they say proportion here in this type of problem, uh, they're talking about a fraction. So we're going to have to make a fraction. And let's see what fraction it is that uh, they really want here. Uh, express the, find the proportion for weight loss values in the sample that are greater than or equal to 10 pounds. Now we really have to zero in here on these wordings. Maybe keep a list of those because they will come up with a whole assortment of different ways to express this. And some of these are tricky. In this case, it's not too bad. It says greater than or equal to 10. So immediately go over here to your histogram and look at your numbers on the bottom. Greater than or equal to 10 would be all of these values over here. So greater than 10 would include this bar, this bar, this bar, and this bar. So we're going to want to take these frequencies and add them up. So as we begin to uh, form our decimal that they want, what we're going to want to do is to take each of those bars, we're going to want to add the ones which are greater than or equal to 10 down here at the bottom. And so if we go back over here to our notes, we can see that that is going to be, first of all, that first bar here. Let's go back again here and notice that that is 13. Our next bar uh, is 10. Our next bar, 9. Our next bar, 5. So go over there and uh, take a look at that. We'll add those up. And then, of course, we need to express that as a fraction of the total. And we've already seen up here at the top that this total, or our sample size, is 50. So basically, this is what they want us to do. They want us to uh, add up those numbers on the top and then make that a fraction over 50 and convert that into a decimal. And so doing that, what I have here then is 37 divided by 50. So if I grab my calculator here and take 37, make a fraction 50, uh, then go ahead and convert that to a decimal, uh, we'll see that that's 0 0.74. And that is what Alex wants for this. So let's go back here and give the answer. They say do not round it. So we'll simply put in 0 0.74, exactly what we got and check it.